Over the last five years, I've used more than 12 different Euro configurations in my house. But for this video, I'll focus on the four newest Wi-Fi 6 models. And my conclusion is that the Euro 6 and the 6 Plus are perfect for anybody with a house under 4,000 square feet and for those who want to dip their toes into the Wi-Fi 6 and thread waters. On the higher end, the Pro 6 is best for anybody with a large house or lots of devices and anyone who wants to maximize performance in 2023 with a Euro system. Well, the Pro 6E is the first to incorporate the six gigahertz band. It's one of the most confusing products that I've ever tested. And we'll get into why in the performance section later in this video. So to start this video, first we're gonna go over the fundamentals of a Euro system as if you have no prior experience or knowledge. And then we'll discuss the stability, get into my performance testing, and then talk about the privacy concerns. Euro mesh Wi-Fi systems are great for those who prioritize an easy to install and a user-friendly system. It's the one Wi-Fi system that I'm confident that my parents could get up and running in under 30 minutes and never have to call me for tech support. The attractive design of Eero routers can't be overlooked either. While it may seem silly, I love having a Wi-Fi system that actually looks good. Unlike traditional routers with protruding antennas, each Eero model has a sleek and stylish appearance that can blend in anywhere in the house. Eero is great for parents with younger kids too, because the internet usage of devices can be managed and monitored. The app lets you group devices by each user and create a family profile, which will allow you to set scheduled access and downtime periods for set devices. And now there's a new feature that lets multiple household members have admin access. There's also an interface that displays your devices in order of real-time bandwidth usage. This can be helpful for troubleshooting when the network or a device isn't running as intended. The amount of bandwidth each profile or device is consuming for the current week is displayed as well. But unfortunately, you'll need Aero Plus for $99 a year if you want full access to historical bandwidth usage, content filtering, and ad blocking. Most won't need the Aero Plus subscription. However, it's really not that bad of a deal because it includes 1Password's password manager and encrypt.me's VPN. I've been a happy subscriber because a VPN and a password manager are two things that I would be buying independently either way. The bottom line is that if you're looking for an easy to use Wi-Fi system that'll help improve your stability and your range and your appearance from a traditional router system, Eero is the near perfect choice. However, if you're a networking nerd and you want a web-based interface to maximize your performance, this just isn't the system for you. Eero does the best they can to abstract a lot of complexity which means that you're left with a pretty basic app. Eero uses true mesh technology that dynamically routes devices using algorithms and real-time data to help avoid drop-offs. It also automatically optimizes and self-corrects over time. I'm not smart enough to understand how these optimizations work in the background or even how they differ from other mesh systems, but it's likely that this true mesh is just a marketing term. But here's what I do know. I've used dozens of mesh Wi-Fi systems over the years, like the Netgear Orbi, the Google, the Nest, the TP-Link Deco, and the Linksys Velo. And Eero is almost always the most stable and just works without being noticed, which is the highest praise you can have for a Wi-Fi system in my book. With most Wi-Fi systems, when you walk around your house with your device, you'll have a slight hiccup in your connection as your device switches from one node to the other. But this really does not happen with a Eero system. It has client steering that smoothly directs and hands off your devices to the optimal nodes as you move throughout your house. These four Wi-Fi 6 models have differed a bit in the stability after the initial release, but they've been out in the wild for a while and currently there was no noticeable difference in stability for me. Aero 6 and Aero 6 Plus are dual band systems with a 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz band, which means that a chunk of your total bandwidth from the five gigahertz band will be wasted on the backhaul communication. The backhaul is just the communication between the nodes. So when the main gateway router that's plugged into the modem sends out the signal to all the secondary nodes. Eero Pro 6 and Eero Pro 6E are tri-band systems. The Pro 6 has two five gigahertz bands, while the Pro 6E has a six gigahertz band and a five gigahertz band. The six gigahertz band is part of the new Wi-Fi 6E standard. It allows for wider channels and less congestion among your devices, which should allow for faster speeds when a six gigahertz compatible device is connected to that band. Theoretically, both Pro models should have three available bands for the backhaul, with the five gigahertz and six gigahertz bands taking the primary backhaul duties. But that's not always the case, which we'll get into in the next section. I created an iPerf 3 server on my M2 MacBook Air, 
which plugged into my Aero directly with the ethernet cable. This tests throughput speed rather than factoring in my own speed from my internet service provider. This should give you a more realistic expectation compared to Eero's spec sheet or a internet speed test. My house is just 1200 square feet, but I wanted to cover the entire backyard as well. For each model tested, I used a two node configuration and they were placed in the same optimal spot for my house. And then I used the iPerf 3 app on my iPhone 14 Pro, which utilizes the two and the five gigahertz band, but it's not compatible with the six gigahertz band. It has a max real life speed of about 867 megabits per second. And I checked from 10 set locations in my house and backyard and then averaged the numbers together. And remember when a device is plugged directly into the six plus, the Pro 6 or the Pro 6e, you will be able to get gigabit internet speeds. But in this video, I'm testing for wireless mesh speeds. My results for the dual band Eero 6 and Eero 6 Plus systems were as expected, delivering more than 330 megabits per second on average throughout my house with impressive stability. The Pro 6 also performs in line with expectations due to the third band, which allows for more space for devices and backhaul to intermingle. However, my results for the Eero Pro 6e might be surprising because the speed is more in line with the dual band models. Wi-Fi 6E devices can theoretically reach up to 2000 megabits per second, but I intentionally use my iPhone 14 Pro without six gigahertz band support to give a fair expectation of what you should expect in 2023 because there just aren't many devices on the market that support the newest standard. As of now, I don't have a single device in my house that utilizes the six gigahertz band. You might be thinking, oh, you idiot, why would you buy this device when you have no six gigahertz band capable devices? But I was actually convinced that the six gigahertz band would work as a primary backhaul, which would leave that five gigahertz band wide open for my devices, and I would see some kind of speed improvement there. But that didn't happen. Which brings me to the second issue with the six gigahertz band. Just like the range of the five gigahertz band is shorter than the 2.4, the six is shorter than the five, which makes the six gigahertz band a less reliable backhaul. In my case, the Pro 6E appeared to be depending primarily on the single five gigahertz band for the backhaul, which meant that all my five gigahertz devices and the Eero nodes were fighting for bandwidth on a single band. On the other hand, the older Pro 6 has two five gigahertz bands for backhaul and clients to share, which is more friendly in an environment primarily with five gigahertz devices. Not to completely pile on the Pro 6e, but the Pro 6 has a four by four five gigahertz channel, while the Pro 6e only has a two by two. And this will hurt performance with some devices. So not only is the Pro 6e not worth the extra $150, but it's actually a downgrade in performance for most households in 2023. Unless you have a bunch of six gigahertz devices, or you wanna run a wired backhaul between the nodes. I really appreciate Eero's dedication to implementing brand new standards really early, but a quad band system or a stronger radio on that five gigahertz band would have made it a much more practical solution for 2023. And you might be thinking, well, I just want a future proof, but this argument really doesn't make much sense to me because once there are a bunch of six gigahertz devices in the wild down the line in a few years, there's gonna be much better systems on the market. I'd be stunned if Eero doesn't have at least two more big releases in the next few years that are gonna be way more capable than the Pro 6e. I've neglected privacy on this channel for way too long when it comes to Wi-Fi systems. And since Amazon's acquisition of Eero a few years back, a lot of people have been rightfully worried about Eero's stance on privacy. But according to Eero, its privacy policy hasn't material changed since the acquisition. However, this still means that Eero uses your data from your devices and how they're being used to help optimize your network. The thing that I don't like is there's no way to opt out of this data collection and there's no way to view what data they have collected. The only way to get around this data collection is to buy a system like Orbi that has no cloud dependencies. Since the data collection isn't optional, let's go over what they're actually collecting. Are they spying on every website I ever go to? So they collect product and performance information from your devices like network speeds, bandwidth usage, stats, MAC addresses, IP addresses, and types of connected devices. What this means is theoretically, Eero knows exactly when you're home, when you're working, and when you're sleeping, all based on how your devices operate on your network. However, the good news is that due to how HTTPS works, there's no way for Eero to see any of your browser history, even if they wanted to. And I also think it's worth mentioning that almost a third of the entire internet uses Amazon's AWS services 
for their infrastructure. There's just no escaping Amazon, even if you wanted to. Amazon has an advertising platform and they love data, but as of now, I don't really see their stake in Eero as a major concern, especially if you already have another Amazon or Ring device your privacy is probably at the same risk. But given Amazon's enormous size, there's always gonna be more risk compared to a smaller company. Hero 6 is best for those who pay for internet under 500 megabits per second. The three set is perfect for those who have a modest amount of connected devices and a home under 4,000 square feet. It's a great system to dip your toes into the Wi-Fi 6 waters. The only disadvantages to this set are that it's the slowest Wi-Fi 6 Eero and only the main gateway router has ethernet ports, which means that you can only connect one ethernet accessory for your entire home. The Eero 6 Plus is very similar to the Eero 6. It's great for those who pay for 500 megabits per second or less, have under 75 connected devices, and a home under 4,000 square feet. It's $100 more than the Eero 6 set, but each node has two ethernet ports. The five gigahertz band has a faster theoretical speed, but you won't really see this too much in real life. Aero Pro 6 is a great choice for those who want to maximize performance in 2023 for Aero system. It's $399 for a set of three or $299 for a set of two, which is a more reasonable price than when they were first released. However, don't expect to get anywhere near gigabit speeds with this system. The three bands along with the extended range just make it perfect for larger houses and those with tons of connected devices. The Pro 6e is the only Aero system that I've ever reviewed that I don't recommend. It's just not equipped for a 2023 world with a limited amount of six gigahertz capable devices. And the future proofing argument just doesn't make sense because once six gigahertz is ubiquitous, there will be much better Wi-Fi systems on the market. The six gigahertz band is really exciting for the future of Wi-Fi, but I think we're really far off from that future. So I don't think it makes sense to spend so much money to make your performance worse. That said, this system works just as well as any other Eero. I'm just disappointed that you spend nearly $600 and you get performance that is similar to the Eero 6 Plus. Before we wrap things up, I have two quick side notes. I already mentioned this briefly, but you can create a wired backhaul if you wire two Eero's together with ethernet. This is definitely not necessary, not really how these systems are intended to be used. But if you do do this, it makes the third band from the Pro models way less important. Rather than waste space on the node-to-node -node communication, that bandwidth space will just be wide open for all of your devices. If you're still confused about which configuration would be best for you, check out Euro's questionnaire. It asks questions about your house size and number of devices, and then recommends which configuration would work best for you. It's not definitive, but I think it's a great place to start. And finally, which model am I keeping? At my house, I pay for 450 megabits per second from my internet service provider. And with either of these four models, I average about 250 megabits per second throughout my house. I consider this a pretty huge win. Based on that, I would've been fine sticking with the base Eero 6, but I decided to keep the Eero 6 Plus because I got slightly better performance with that model. And I have a bunch of ethernet accessories, so having five available ports is perfect for me. Keep in mind, it's just my wife and me at this house, and we only have about 30 total connected devices. And most of those are not all connected at the exact same time. If I had more devices or more family members or just a larger house, the Aero Pro 6 is probably what I would go with, but it's just not what I need in my current situation. So that's all I have for this video. And I would love your thoughts on Eero and if you think I missed anything. And if you still have questions or something I said was unclear, just let me know in the comments and I'll get right back to you. And I've also been considering testing some more privacy centric systems. So if you have any recommendations, let me know and maybe I'll test them. So thanks for watching this one. I'm out.